Hi, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Welcome to Essential Issues, a retrospective series where I talk about memorable DC comics of the past that are still affordably available today, blabbing about why they are special to me and what, if anything, they have to say about the essential issues of real life. Now, warning, this series does freely contain spoilers, but I think even spoiled, the stories I feature are still well worth reading. This time, we're taking a look at the eight-issue story arc, Superman. Man, Lois and Clark. Now, I changed one word from my introduction, redefining this series as featuring comics that I think are memorable, but not necessarily my favorites. I've already featured one or two stories in this series that uh, fall into that category, um, and so I and I wouldn't necessarily call this one a favorite story. So it did seem time to tweak that intro just a tad. But now before we get into Superman, Lois, and Clark as a memorable story that I find essential in some way, I have to provide some historical context and then say a little about the DC Comics story Convergence, because unfortunately getting the pre-Flashpoint Superman back into the New 52 continuity did not involve a single easily digestible story arc or a trade paperback as much as I would prefer that. The process of restoring pre-Flashpoint Superman to the New 52 was a complicated affair that involved multiple story arcs. This time, I'm giving an overview of two story arcs with more attention on one, Superman, Lois, and Clark, uh, than, you know, the other, which is Convergence. And they still, at the end of this, leave the restoration of Superman only about halfway complete. Now, just to give a little context, the New 52 initiative at DC reimagined Superman as a more angry, aggressive, and scowling hero of the people, a liberal avenger that arguably pulled inspiration faithfully from the very earliest appearances of Superman in the 1930s, but that nevertheless felt far removed from what many modern readers had come to love about the character as it had changed and evolved over the decades. The, the New 52 Superman had no romance with Lois Lane, opting instead for a love affair with Wonder Woman. Clark's adoptive parents, Jonathan and Martha Kent, had now died years before Clark ever took up the mantle of Superman. And on top of all that, Superman's secret identity as Clark Kent had been revealed to the world. So on multiple levels, Superman's status quo was extremely far off the rails from what many fans expected and wanted. At this point, it couldn't just be a matter of massaging his character over time through editorial reinterpretation and character trait emphasis. This was a demonstrably different Superman. And DC likely realized that the only way to get Superman back to the way, to the way he was before the Flashpoint story event was to actually bring back that Superman, treating the New 52 not as a modified version of the pre-Flashpoint timeline, which it seemed to have been treated in that way up to this point, but instead actually treated as a fresh new timeline. Meaning that yes, somewhere, somewhen, somehow, the pre-Flashpoint DC timeline still existed and had in some way, or to some limited degree at least, continued after the Flashpoint event. Which brings us to the DC crossover story event, Convergence. Arguably not since Crisis on Infinite Earths has a DC crossover event dealt so heavily with bringing together characters from numerous alternate DC timelines. In Convergence, the, as the description reads, the alien collector Brainiac has gathered worlds from different eras of DC history and is forcing them to compete for their survival. Now. I don't remember why this is. It, it was probably a year or so ago that I, that I read this story for the first time. I find it this story very chaotic and forgettable. Part of that is probably because it alternates between four different writers over the nine issues of the, of the main story. Included among the alternate worlds uh, featured here in the story is the New 52 version of Earth 2 and its reimagined Justice Society characters, the Flashpoint universe featuring Flashpoint Batman, the prehistoric DC universe, the Wild West, Kingdom Come, Red Sun, and more. Now nestled in the mix uh, as a tie-in, not part of the main eight book series of Convergence, but as a tie-in, Superman Convergence 1 and 2 uh, uh, featured the Superman and Lois Lane from the pre-Flashpoint continuity. Uh, and we discovered that Lois 
is pregnant with their first child. Now, at this point, you'd be reasonable in thinking these two aren't going to stay around. Lois and Clark having a baby has always been a concept limited to various Elseworld stories and what-if scenarios, alternate timelines and stuff. Not a status quo change that is ever allowed to stick. It felt to me, as I read this, like a potential attempt at a revisit and then send-off for these characters. I don't know if at this point they had in mind they were definitely going to bring back the pre-New 52 Superman back, or if people just respond to this so strongly. So at, at the time, I don't know what the intention was. Maybe they were just testing the waters. Um, but at, in reading this, it reads to me pretty simply like a story meant to let readers know that this version of Superman and Lois that they cared about did get their happily ever after ending. But that is certainly not the limits of what this proved to be. Now, sticking with Lois and Clark's story in Superman Converge Convergence number two, since really this is largely the only part of this whole Convergence thing that I found interesting, a scene later on, very fittingly, has the Flashpoint Batman, Dr. Thomas Wayne, uh, help to deliver Lois and Clark's baby boy, whom they name John after Jonathan Kent. One clue that makes me think that this wasn't intended to bring the pre-Flashpoint Superman back into the DC Universe was that eventually this scenario of how John was born was retconned, was wiped out, so that the the Flashpoint Batman was not involved at all. But for now, it's a it's a fitting moment. Now, at the end of the mainline Convergence story, in what feels like some very conspicuously missing story panels, Superman, Lois, and John are sent with other heroes to the first crisis to prevent the collapse of the multiverse. After which they they are told they will naturally land back into their reset timelines. A narration box from the character directing all of this informs us that they succeeded at this mission, but we don't see any of it play out. Or any panels doing more than symbolically showing these characters back in their timelines. So a lot is left unsaid and unshown here. And that's where the eight-issue series Superman, Lois, and Clark picks up. In the first few pages, we get the gaps filled in from the end of Convergence. Since their timeline was apparently gone forever, they were instead given the option to resettle on any other existing timeline. And they chose the New 52 timeline and were deposited there just days before the Justice League first formed, when the New 52 DC heroes were still very new and inexperienced. Although Superman nearly stepped in to help them defeat Darkseid, he and Lois are both glad that he didn't have to. They realized they needed time and anonymity as they figured out their place in this world and endeavored to keep their son John safe. And with just a few panels and text boxes, we are simply informed that years passed, and John is now an unspecified elementary school age, while they live on a country farm much like Clark grew up on, under different names. Lois continues investigating and writing, publishing anonymously as Author X, becoming one of the most celebrated investigative journalists alive despite remaining unknown to the public. Clark routinely does good deeds without being spotted, and wearing his black and silver suit, also sporting a beard, presumably to differentiate him from the New 52 Clark Kent, should anyone ever happen to see images of the two together. Meanwhile, their son John has no idea that his dad is Superman. Eventually, as you might guess, they are put in danger by various sources and circumstances. Chief among them is a villain named Blank, who is seemingly unstoppable in his power and incredibly malicious. The result is a very standard, solid Superman story that isn't very memorable, but that has one key difference that made it engaging to me in a new way. Superman now has both a wife and a child to protect. A family. And as a father of two boys not much older than John is depicted in this story, I found Clark's protective aggression when his family is threatened dramatically powerful. Then, in the midst of all the stress and busyness, and with the backdrop of the New 52 Superman's identity being revealed in newspapers, John stumbles upon his father's old costume and discovers he is Superman. However, he doesn't share this discovery immediately, and first tries to confirm his belief through investigation. 
Finally, in a tearful confrontation with his mom, he asks why they have been lying to him. And we discover even more central to his conflict is wondering, if his dad is Superman, then what does that make him? Well, for starters, in the outburst of this moment, we learn that he is at the very least a kid with a bit of super strength. After the action settles down a few scenes later, Lois and Clark have a talk with their son John, who asks them why they kept the truth from him. I have to say that I had the same question, and I wasn't very satisfied with their answer. The only reason Clark gives is to say, our priority has been keeping you safe, John. I don't think this says enough. Now, at first my thoughts were a little too hard on Lois and Clark. My instinct was to compare this situation to other things parents keep from their kids until they are older that Holly and I just started telling our boys about as early as possible, like the fact that there is no Santa Claus and Tooth Fairy and explanations of where babies come from and how adults produce them. But there is no real danger in us telling our kids these things. I mean, if they use poor judgment and share what we've said around the wrong people at the wrong times, then we might get an embarrassing call from the school or maybe have other parents upset with us. But our boys won't be in danger of harm and we wouldn't need to completely uproot our lives. However, if preschool or kindergarten age John had told friends or teachers about what his dad can do and who he is, that would have at least drawn dangerous attention, necessitating a, a relocation of their family, or perhaps would even result in enemies of the New 52 Superman attacking Lois and John, whom they had no idea had powers until this point. The writer doesn't leverage this reasoning, which I think was a real missed opportunity, but as a parent, I can connect the dots pretty easily between Clark's comment about uh, prioritizing safety and the decision to keep John in the dark. Although I'll perhaps say that they still waited longer than they should have before telling him. A parallel in the real world that this situation made me think of, however, is that of Christian missionaries with young children living covertly, specifically in countries that are extremely hostile toward Christianity. Uh, Holly and I actually know of one family in this situation personally, and this issue makes me want to talk to them about this aspect of their work and their parenting the next time that they are back here in the U.S. Uh, secret identities of those trying to save others may seem like something only in the comics, but it is actually a very real thing in the world of modern Christian missionary work. Apart from uh, that particular aspect of parenting, another parallel I connected with is how John thinks of his father. It reminds me of when the kids in the movie Hook discover that Peter Pan is their dad and they think it's just the coolest thing in the world. John loves who his dad is and what he can do and he wants to be just like him. and. Although I don't have any desire for my boys to choose all the same paths that I've chosen in life, not even close, I do so want to be a dad worthy of my boys' imitation and aspiration. I so want them to be excited to spend time with me and, and to learn from me. And like Clark and Lois, I want to see them grow and learn to soar on their own. And this story is really the first of some great Superman and John moments, at least, and stories as well, probably, that, that resonate with me for similar reasons. And so for that, Superman, Lois and Clark is an essential Superman story in my mind. For more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services.